Okay, in this video, we're going to cover a couple of housekeeping things in relation to a new setup of the Epilog Laser, the software suite, uh, on any of the Fusion Pro, Edge, or Maker units when using Corel Draw. In the owner's manual, it discusses the screenshots and steps through how to get the Corel Draw software set up. So, this would be just primarily for Corel Draw users and how to set up the printing uh, of the screen so that the object or element that you're printing shows up in the correct space. So let's demonstrate what happens if it's not set up correctly. We're going to open up Corel Draw. So once our Corel Draw is opened up here, we're going to click on, uh, let's just start a new page. And let's just maybe make an easy uh, coaster. Say we're printing a, a leather or a bamboo coaster. And one of the things that we try and get folks to do is set up your primary color mode in Corel Draw as RGB. There's reasons for this won't get into now, but the primary color palette and the primary color mode you want to be printing from Corel Draw to the laser should be RGB. Just real quick, I'll say that the only color in the color palette that the Epilogue laser will not print or recognize or ignore is a RGB white, a pure white RGB. A CMYK white, it will recognize in laser whether you like it or not. So if you have artwork that's brought in to Corel Draw as CMYK, then it's possible that that would accidentally laser on your piece of crystal or glass, leather, so forth. But moving on, so we're going to make a new page 4x4 and uh, what we want to do is just get some design out here. Let's just make a star. Holding the control key, make it a perfect star. We'll say P. We'll push the letter P on the keyboard and center that. Then we'll fill that black. I'm going to left click on black and then right click on the color red to take away the outline. And uh, so now moving on, if I wanted to print this to the Epilog software suite, I would want to make sure that the software is running. So I'm going to go to Epilog Job Manager. And once that's opened, um, and this is very helpful to do, especially if you have multiple lasers. If you've got multiple Epilogs over here, and many of you do, um, it's nice to go ahead and have this open and select or highlight the machine because that kind of sets the default for what machine that's going to go to when you print straight to it. So uh, with that open, I'll go back to Corel Draw, and I'm going to show you the wrong way or show you what happens if things aren't set up in the proper way for Corel Draw. But when we click on Print, and then our Print Window dialog comes up, in this orientation, I'm going to choose Match Orientation. Instead of And Size, we'll choose either Use Printer Default both are showing the same result. And that result is you the Epilogue software page is developed on I think a 50 or 100 inch by 100 inch page. And so that's why that looks so small with a 4x4 coaster in the middle. And let me say if you have run older Epilogues you were used to the upper left corner of the page and CorelDRAW being the upper left corner of the machine. And so we typically want those to match. Well, in order for that to happen, we have to go through some settings to do that. Now, until you execute these settings I'm about to show you, you won't have match orientation and size here. It's just going to be these two. So I'm going to no ignore that that is there for a moment. I'm going to choose cancel. And this is one of the things we do right out of the gate uh, when I have a new installation, when I'm coming on site or walking a customer through setting up a curl draw for the first time or with a new laser. So this is a one-time housekeeping thing and so we're going to choose tools and options and global and let's go down to printing and then driver compatibility so once you go follow those clicks you'll get to the printer and you'll be able to select out of your list of printers the epilogue engraver in your owner's manual, this is covered screenshot by screenshot, but here in this video it says print to fit the paper size. With this checked, or another word to say it, until that is checked, 
you won't have that and size in the print dialog as an option. It's just going to be set as default or print to printer and the page size won't be right. And so only till you have that checked through those steps will you get the correct way to be able to print. And then once you see the print, you'll choose and size. Now, again, I'm going to go back and do this wrong so you'll see what happens if you don't have that and you leave it set to this. When we click on print, then when the dashboard opens, notice the first screen that opens up here is the dashboard. We have our live video view of what's in the machine. This is a 36 by 24. But I don't see the star anywhere. Now we see a star process show up. We see a process here, but it also shows a zero runtime. Anytime you see a process with a runtime, most of the time that is due to the object being out of bounds or off the page. Now there's a couple of ways to handle this. I could try and zoom out and try, go try and find it and we see it's way down there. Or, zoom back to table, if you simply right click up here in the gray area and choose select all, you'll see that the Y axis here is showing that it is off the page indeed. I don't have to go find it. I can just simply choose a value that I know will put it within my work area, within my table. So normally I'm like one by one or two by two, and then I'll just push enter, and then there is the star. So once it's on my screen, then I know it's there, and I can move that anywhere we want to, and place that anywhere for engraving. Okay, so um, that shows if we have to go find it, if you don't have CorelDRAW set up correctly. And by the way, if you're using CorelDRAW 19 or 20, those software versions of CorelDRAW had a pretty significant bug that would not let us go find or choose to print the page size correctly. In other words, in 2019 and 2020, uh, it is a known issue that if you click on driver compatibility, it may not end up even showing you your printer here that would not allow you to use this. So maybe a good reason to upgrade otherwise you won't be able to match the orientation and size so therefore you won't have uh, that print dialog that shows match your orientation and size here you will only have these two if using those versions and you can't get it to show that checkbox so if that's the case uh, then you'll just have to go search for the object or move it where you want to each time Otherwise, upgrade to where you can see it. Then you can choose match orientation and size. And you typically only have to do that once. And so now when I click on print, you'll see that that's going to show up in the correct location, meaning the upper left corner of the page in CorelDRAW is the upper left corner of uh, the table and where the orientation is of the artwork. So I hope that shows you uh, a great deal of help on how to get the CorelDRAW set up correctly. If you've got a new installation or an older version that's giving you trouble. One other housekeeping tip for new installation users for Corel, I'll say this, that the page size, you're show, showing here a 4x4, four four, and what that is, is that's our page size from Corel. Now this pink area uh, is our out of bounds, in other words, that is non-calculated area. In other words, if I take my star, which right now we see is a 2 minute 14 second. If I click and drag this off into the um, out of bounds area, then look at that, the runtime is not calculated. So anything inside this pink dashed area will not be calculated into engraving. Now if you put the artwork even halfway in, then that area that is in there will be calculated. And that's the only area that will be calculated. And we show that's reflected in the runtime. So many folks like to use this to where they'll have maybe a bunch of logos out here that they're not using until they get it ready. And these are adjustable, by the way. These out of bound ruler or guys, we'll call them, uh, extended margins, advanced margins. We can use this to cover up or expose areas that we do or don't want to send to the laser. And so they're adjustable on all four sides. Um, however, most folks or some folks don't want to use, they don't want to see this. So 
Uh, before I end this video, I'm going to show how to get rid of those if you don't want to see those or have to mess with moving those out of your way. So to do that, I'm going to go up to the gear in the upper right corner, and that opens up our Epilogue Settings dashboard controls. And so we'll go to our dashboard tab and choose on or slide on the auto extend the margins. So that simply says automatically expands the printable area to the full extents of the laser table for new jobs. So that's not only going to happen in, until you get a new job sent. So I'm now that I've turned that on, I'm going to discard this job. And I don't, uh, let's just say, yeah, I don't want to see that again. Yes, I'm sure I want to discard it. So in reflection or review, let's say print, we have our four by four page. We also have our print orientation and size correct. So that's going to show up in the right spot. Then we're going to say print. And since we turned that slider to on to automatic slim the margins, then those margins are no longer in our way. And we can begin to move that wherever we want. We can resize it. We can make it rotated. We can copy and paste. So just a couple of quick basics, control C and control V that'll make a copy if we want. But if I didn't want that copy to be engraved for now, I can bring this guideline down and uh, maybe just only cover up, we'll cover up that one and leave that one exposed. Uh, but this one can be resized. We can make it larger. And anything I'm doing here, I can also do manually with the values, position, and uh, size, and rotation over there. Um, this allows us to expand it on the four corners. But if we just slightly move the cursor, we see that bended arrow, and that's what gets used as the rotation handle. Now that rotation handle can serve as the center, but your rotation point is in the center. So if we were to move that rotation handle to one of the corners, now when we rotate that, that's going to allow us to move or pivot around that spot. Works very similar like it does in Corel Draw. So, uh, just a good entry level introduction to getting your Corel Draw set up correctly. And we, again, let me kind of go back out to Corel Draw. We want that to be. Uh, we're going to recommend that you use the RGB color palette over here on the right. So in Corel Draw, your color palettes. Uh, under color palettes and then palettes. It's our recommendation for the laser. Anytime you're printing to the laser that you're using the um, RGB color palette and not the CMYK color palette. So if you install Corel Draw for the first time, it might not show that. It might show this one or a default palette, which uh, can be sometimes seen as the CMYK. So you can kind of see a difference there between some of the colors. And so we're going to recommend RGB and turning off CMYK, turning off the default, and then we can collapse that. That's the palette we want to print from. Because if this star, let me just say for example, if it is a pure white, then the laser will not see it and will ignore it. If that, however, is a CMYK white, then it will laser a slight halftone over where that is. Uh, very similar to if you had like a little shade of gray there. So that covers a couple of good um, level of basics for housekeeping things to do in the job manager and how to set up Corel Draw. And so uh, let's go back to here. And so we're going to click on, well, we won't print that, but we can send it to the manager. Then that will send that over to the uncategorized jobs tab. So if we go to the jobs, then in the uncategorized job tab, that can't be changed. Everything defaults to this folder here. Now we can create custom folders, and we'll cover that in another video. But that will do it for this one. Thank you.